It's time for our next Disney World staycation. Welcome to Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. Hey there, ma'am fam. We are back for another Disney staycation at the single most requested Disney World Resort. We have gotten a ton of comments asking for us to stay at Caribbean Beach, and we pulled the ma'am fam on Discord to see where we should stay next, and Caribbean Beach was the number one answer, so here we are. We're gonna check out the room, check out some of the dining options, and really, all these islands have to offer. Let's go. Welcome, friends, to Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. Now, this is a moderate resort theme to, you guessed it, the Caribbean, with different neighborhoods that are all named after different islands. It's gone through several refurbishments in the last several years, including the lobby, they're doing some work on the outside right now, and some of the rooms have been refurbished as well. Now again, this is a moderate resort, so you're gonna see a few more amenities than a value resort like the All Stars are Pop Century, but you're not gonna see quite as many perks as staying at a deluxe resort like the Polynesian or the Wilderness Lodge. As far as prices go, a standard room, the lowest you'll see it during value season without any discounts is around $270 per night. The most expensive you'll see during peak season during those holidays is just over $500 per night. We have booked a preferred room, which we'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit when we get in there. But for now, let's check out the lobby and check in. Well, that's nice. Happy birthday, Caribbean Beach. We're the same age. Does that make me feel old or young? I'm not gonna think about it for too long. You know what, she looks great in here. Light and airy and happy, so I'm gonna take it as a compliment. <laughs> oh, thank you! <laughs> Am I supposed to do hopscotch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have just successfully checked in with Sarah, who is incredibly helpful. And both Molly and I are pretty hungry, so we're headed to Center Town Market, which is the quick service restaurant located here in Old Port Royal. Now, while you are going to find classic dishes on this menu, like chicken tenders and hamburgers, you are also going to find some Caribbean influenced dishes, like the hot Cuban sandwich and the rum mango barbecue pulled pork sandwich. You will also see those Caribbean influences on menus throughout this resort. Picked up our food. I got the fish tacos and the cucumber tomato salad on the side, which looks delightful. Alan got a chicken bowl that's got jerk chicken. Also, they have shaky jamaica, so things are starting well. Here is the chicken bowl. We have jerk chicken served over a bit of rice and beans with some of that tomato cucumber salad and pickled vegetable. There is also a cilantro lime tofu crema on the side that I will be indulging in after I take a bite of this all together. Here we go. Okay, Caribbean Beach. First things first, the chicken is not dry, which is something that I always fear when it comes to a lot of like, mass prepared meats. Now I normally expect jerk seasoning to be incredibly spicy and pungent. This is not that. I think this is just sort of like the theme park version of jerk seasoning. So if you are used to a traditional style of jerk, this ain't it. But it is spiced pretty well for a theme park meal. The rice is nice and fluffy. Beans adding some nice heartiness to that base. But I gotta say the star of the show here is that tomato and cucumber salad. It's so bright and fresh. I'm pleasantly surprised. And I got the fish tacos. So I've got three fish tacos here. It does look like it's grilled, probably some kind of light white fish. Um, and they are topped with some of those pickled veggies, some crema and cotija cheese. Uh, you also have pico de gallo here on the side and a fresh lime. And then again, I got to choose my side. I went with the salad, but you could have picked like macaroni and cheese fries um, and a couple other things. Can I get this on there? Cause I love a little pico. And I'm gonna go with the fresh lime as well. Caribbean Beach. Right? Wow. That is delicious. That fish is cooked perfectly. Not dry, not super fishy. It's been marinated in something that's slightly sweet, that flavor profile I would associate with the Caribbean. Then you've got the fresh produce plus the pickled produce, adding some uh, acidity and crunch, a little bit of zest from the lime. And then you've got the cotija cheese, which has just that little bit of nuttiness. Like, I'm genuinely surprised at how good this fish taco is. 
Well, that was a surprisingly delicious lunch here at Centertown Market, complete with a shaky Jamaica. Now, I also want to mention that Centertown Market also has this nice grab and go area. You can either have your food package to go if you want to take it to the pool, or they have a wide selection of drinks, pastries, prepackaged food, pizza, um, if you would like to grab that there. Also, as we are finishing up our meal, I heard some chaos and commotion in the lobby, and it's these wonderful cast members playing hopscotch and clapping for guests, and they They've got stickers and coloring pages and I'm just like, the cast members here so far have been phenomenal. The retail location here in the Caribbean Reach Resort is Calypso Trading Post and it is filled with a variety of standard theme park merchandise, some items that are themed to Caribbean Beach, ooh, very tropical, love that, ooh, and some Skyliner specific items because remember Caribbean Beach is indeed a part of the Skyliner Resort Loop. They also have a variety of snacks for purchase as well as those sundry items like toothpaste and a toothbrush should you have forgotten yours at home. As well as a case filled with a variety of beverages, both adult and non should you so require. What's also super cool is that they have the purple martin birds here, which is really unique to Caribbean Beach because there are birdhouses that welcome these birds into the resort everywhere. So the fact that these are in the gift shop is really cool. Also. Disney doesn't do enough of the koozie merchandise. Oh. Stuff in Manor, which is the pool bar, and then the, like, I feel like Disney's, like, missing a niche market of people who want to keep a frosty can cold, yeah. but they don't want their hand to get cold. They do need a beverage holder. Now, Molly, I can't help but notice that what you're not acknowledging are these absolutely stunning tropical ears. Now, Molly... Popped outside to do some exploring here in the main hub of the resort at Old Point Royale. And right here is the main pool of Caribbean Beach. Now I should note that right now when we're filming this, it's under refurbishment. It should be opening up in just a couple weeks actually from when you are seeing this. But this is where the main pool is of the hotel. And it's really cool pirate themed. It's kind of like abandoned fortress relics with cannons and such. And the kids splash area is also very cute and pirate themed. In addition to this main pool, all five of the neighborhoods have their own quiet pools. So if you're staying here during a non-refurbishment time, this is where you'd wanna come for all the kids' activities and games and the cast members hosting trivia and such. And the quiet pools are perfect if you just kinda wanna lay out, relax, and luxuriate a bit more. I will say though, even with the pool being closed, there's no shortage of activities around here. They're still doing the campfire and movie under the stars. They're hosting trivia and other games. So I will say so far, the cast members here have been wonderful. As we continue on, we are passing Banana Cabana, which is the pool bar backslash eatery. But we're gonna continue making our way around this not small resort. I mean, just for context, that is the Riviera. And then if we just pan to the left, all of this is Caribbean Beach. She big. Now, because you're so close to the Riviera, it is a great pro tip that when you're booking your room, you can request to try and stay in a preferred room um, and stay in either Martinique, which is the closest neighborhood right here, or Aruba, which is the neighborhood right here, then you are closer to Riviera, which means A, you can use their Skyliner station, and B, you're very close to their food, which as lovely as Centertown Market was, you can't beat the food of the Riviera. It's one of the best food resorts on property, in my opinion. So I love that being here, you're paying the moderate price, but you have access to some of those perks, like their Skyliner station and their great food at the Riviera. If you want to know more about Riviera, we have done a staycation there as well. And speaking of the Skyliner, that is one of the big perks of staying here at Caribbean Beach. It is home to the Skyliner hub, which means you can easily access both Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios from the central Skyliner hub. The con of this resort, however, is again how big it is. It's like a 10 minute walk from the building we're gonna be in to the Skyliner maybe longer. <laughs> they do have an internal bus that you can wait on if you do need a ride to the Skyliner station or if you are in a further room and you want to ride up to this area to the dining locations, but just know that getting around this resort could take a good deal about a travel time. And speaking of travel time, probably my least favorite thing about this resort is that internal bus loop because if you are taking the buses to Magic Kingdom, Disney's Animal Kingdom, Disney Springs, or the water parks, you could end up waiting a long time because the bus has to make multiple stops around the loop. 
which means you could get picked up and then have to wait another 10 minutes before you even leave the resort because it has to stop at other neighborhoods bus stops. Now, we did have a wonderful cast member again checking us in, Sarah. We wrote in a cast compliment for her because she was so great. She did tell us that in the mornings when it's really busy and a lot of people are trying to get to the parks that they have cut the resort in half. So they're having two buses do what one bus used to do, which does cut down on that wait time. But she also confirmed that theoretically, if you are staying in one of the buildings, that's not the first stop on the bus loop. The bus could actually be full by the time it gets to you. So you just have to keep that in mind. If you're planning on staying here, I recommend getting to the bus stops even earlier than you would at another resort, just in case the bus gets to you and it's full and knowing that you're gonna have to likely make additional stops before you're actually on your way out to the parks. Last thing I'll say about buses, there is a convenient feature in the app where you can see the bus arrival times and they have gone so far as to break it down by the different island names. So you can see, oh, the next bus for Magic Kingdom for Aruba where I'm staying will be here at approximately this time and I will be at the park at approximately this time. Again, take it with a grain of salt because things could happen, but that is a really helpful feature. Now, I do want to point out that if you are staying in one of the further neighborhoods from the Old Port Royale, there is another quick service location in the Trinidad neighborhood. It's called Spyglass Grill. It definitely has a more limited menu than Centertown Market. I'm talking burgers, salads, sandwiches, but they do have some fun Caribbean things like a mojo pork taco or a Cuban sandwich. They also serve breakfast. And regardless, it's nice that if you are staying at one of the neighborhoods that's a little further away, you do have another option to grab food. Now, while you digest all of that fun transportation information, let's take a peek at Caribbean Key. K? Key. 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 Caribbean K? It's, it's, uh, Caribbean Key? Castaway Key. Yeah, right, so it's Caribbean Key. Yeah. Anyway, this is a playground that is open from sunrise until sunset, so if you would like to bring some of your littles out here to enjoy and have a good time, this is a fun spot. Another fun thing to notice is that there are also some hammocks here, as well as throughout the entire resort to help lean into the Caribbean relaxation vibe. Now, Molly. Yeah. I... Yes. These lounge chairs yeah. are situated as if watching the Skyliner is a spectator sport. Oh, I think you could make anything a spectator sport if you try hard enough and you're competitive. I think you could make it a sport like... We're going to sit here till we see every character on the Skyliner. Oh. You could sit here till you see every color. Uh -huh. Well, some of us. You could sit here and see who can count 50 cars faster. I don't know. Huh. Well, that sounds fun. We're not going to do that. No, but we no. Could. You, it sounds fun for somebody else. Well, all that travel certainly has worked up a little bit of a thirst for me. Molly, shall we head to Banana Cabana? If only because it's fun to say. It is fun to say. I've really enjoyed it. As Alan mentioned, Banana Cabana is the pool bar where they do have a walk up if you'd like to grab something and bring it back to your poolside lounger. But they also have a sit down area and a wide variety of food from some munchies to full entrees. But again, you're going to find that Caribbean flavor throughout the menu. It really is cute in here. I love the steel drums that have been made into a light fixture. I love the wood wall over there that's got the different pastel colors. And now let's take a look at the menu, which I do think is offering more variety than a classic Disney pool bar. They've got a ton of Caribbean style cocktails so a lot of them are going to be fruity and frozen like the Cracking Punch or their namesake Banana Cabana. They've also got a wide variety of beer including some island favorites as well as some fun non-alcoholic themed beverages like the Bubbles of the Sea. And as I mentioned they do have some eats as well. Some unusual items for a Disney pool bar like a jerk chicken sandwich, seafood fritters, or a calypso salad. Okay, so our food hall has arrived. We have picked up the grilled wings. Now, there is a choice between rum barbecue, guava buffalo, and Jamaican jerk. We went with Jamaican jerk, naturally, and we also picked up the Caribbean chips and dip. This is Caribbean spice chili, pimento, cheese, tomatoes, peppers, and crispy tortillas, as well as our two beverages. Molly has picked up the Mai Tai, and I have picked up a Tampa Bay Brewing Reef Donkey, mostly because the name is hilarious. Here is the Caribbean Mai Tai, which is Bacardi Superior Rum, Meyer's Original Dark Rum, Bowl's Triple Sec, Orgio, and Lime Juice. I ordered this because I said Crystal, who's our server right now, and also was part of the Under the Table Wobble business on the Galactic Star Cruiser. We love her. She recognized us, we recognized her. The menu just fell down. Things are happening. Anyway, I asked Crystal what of the tropical beverages, which are normally sweet, wouldn't be so sweet, and she suggested the Mai Tai. So, cheers. Mm. 
It tastes like a pretty standard Mai Tai, which I do enjoy. You can certainly taste the rum, a little bit of sweetness from that triple sec, and then you've also got the lime juice, which is adding just a little bit of tartness. This is not the best Mai Tai I've ever had, but it's not the worst Mai Tai I've ever had. Pretty nice, refreshing drink for a poolside evening. Now this is a pale ale. I'm excited to give it a try. Good news, it does not taste like donkeys. But dry, a little malty, light caramel. I, this is super refreshing. I really enjoy this. This is a beer that you can take and truly sip and walk around with. I'm a big fan. What I do enjoy is that they have a variety of beers here that are tropical and sort of expand outside of the standard beer palette that you find at a lot of resorts. So that's a really nice addition. Now, I know you're expecting me to review the cheese and Alan to review the wings, but one, Alan reviewed something jerk chicken earlier. Two, sometimes I had to share the cheese. And three, I love wings and the flavor I get when I go to a wing shop is jerk chicken. So I feel as though I may be some of, of an expert in this field. Look at that, that's a nice crispy wing. You can tell it's been grilled. I'm gonna bite it once and then I'm gonna try it with this nice crema they've provided. Whoa. Caribbean beach. It really showed me something because I did not expect these wings to be that good. These, unlike the bowl earlier, actually do have a little bit of heat on them. Not as much as you'd get if you were in Jamaica, but it is well spiced, but it also has a little bit of tingling of heat. I love that they were grilled and you can actually taste that char from the grill. The chicken's moist. I'm surprised and delighted. Okay, now let's dig in here with this pimento cheese dip. I'm gonna do a little bit of a mix situation. Make sure everything is all together in one bite. All right, I'm making a mess. I am not apologizing for it. Here we are. You know, that is pretty standard chips and cheese dip. It's nothing you're gonna write home about. I don't get a lot of the pimento cheese flavor, if I'm honest, but I do like that it's filled with the, some meat and beans on the interior. I wish it was a little spicier, maybe had a little bit of acidity to it, but I mean, this is a standard chips and cheese dip. All right, our bellies are full once more, and now we are making our way to our room here in Martinique. I hope we get one of the new refurbished rooms. Ooh. I don't think it's the refurbished rooms. All right, here is our room at Caribbean Beach. Now this is a preferred room, but I should note that there's nothing different about the rooms when you go from standard to preferred, you only change location. So preferred rooms tend to be on the first floor like this one, or they're closer to transportation or dining, but the room itself is the same if you book like a regular style room. I must confess I am a bit disappointed that we did not get one of the renovated rooms. They transformed the rooms in Trinidad, which used to be pirates themed into mermaid theme. And while I like pirates more than Little Mermaid, it would have been fun to see one of the newer rooms. That said, let's get into our rapid fire room tour. First up, we've got a table shaped like a pineapple with a couple of chairs. We have a two queen room. This is cute. The cast members left us a little Mickey in the towels, which is lovely. But uh, again, as you can see, we opted for a two queen room instead of a king room. Bed comfort check. Good, it's like a, it's like a six out of 10. Six out of 10, all right. I'm not gonna kick it out of bed, but I'm also note there is plenty of room under the bed to store things. I would say the beds are like two, two and a half feet tall, but you've got like well over a foot down here for storage of suitcases and things. I do like this little thing that you can put phones and hang things on. You also have this, which is- A bench. I'm over on the bench. Next to the bench, you may think it's drawers, but this is actually your beverage cooler. And this is your friendly reminder that it's not a full refrigerator. It only cools to 41 degrees and above, so it'll keep things cool. But if you need something refrigerated like medicine, talk to the front desk. But don't worry, you're not losing out on storage because there is some under the bench. Now it is more than a bench. It pulls down into a very lovely and convenient sleeper right here, so you can sleep five. Alan, do you fit on this? No. So someone shorter than 6'4", so probably a shorter adult or a kid would love to sleep here. And it's really cute because it's got Mickey and Pluto luxuriating right here. No light though. A lot of these have lights in newer rooms, no light. Dad's, here's your thermostat. Here you've got more storage as well as your coffee maker, ice machine. Moving into the bathroom, you can section the whole thing off for privacy. And here we've got extra linens, iron, hanging, ironing board, suitcase rack, and safe. 
looking at the vanity. You've got a dual vanity, towels, your mirror for all the good pore examinations. And you know we gotta do this. Hair dryer check. Uh, 4.8. It's got the little thing on the end, the nozzle, but it doesn't look very powerful and it's quite small. Moving into this section, you can partition this off as well with this door here, which is also your full length mirror, royal throne, and the bathtub. It's very small. It is very small. You have your definitely not H2O with different label products here, and that is your room. Now, this room definitely is a little bit dated. You can tell by the shower, the shower head, the way the lights work, the closet safe area, the TV's not upgraded, the air conditioning. So it just feels not as up to date or as modern as most of the hotel rooms that are on Disney property, even compared to things that have been renovated at the value resorts like the All Stars or Pop Century. It does have a Hey Disney though. Hey Disney, tell us a joke. Knock knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Mary Poppins. Mary, Mary Poppins Pop Pop who? Mary Poppins by to say hello. Okay. Hey Disney, tell us a different joke. Know why Goofy keeps a fish tank by the door at Halloween? Why? why? So he has something to hand out to the trick or trouters. Uh, they're getting worse. Why would he? Why would he give them fish? Who wants fish? Nobody wants fish. Hey Disney, give us one more joke. Why? What's Oogie Boogie's favorite summertime treat? What? what? Ice cream. All right. Update! Molly does not fit on the bed either, so if you are over 5'7", also probably not the choice for you. So kids. So this is for kids. Yes, this is for children. Most of the other ones, though, could fit me. Yes. Like on, in every other room we've been in, I could sleep on this comfortably. Correct, but now your feet are hanging off the edge. I'm like Sunny Eclipse. <laughs> Well, okay, that is our room here at the Caribbean Beach. We paid with an annual pass holder discount, $328 for this room. And again, remember, this is a preferred room because we have the section closest to Old Port Royale. We're on the first floor. We're also very close to Riviera. This is what a normal room looks like. I did look what a standard room would cost without any kind of discount for tonight, and it would be just over $350. We also looked what a Pop Century standard room would be for tonight, and it's $270, so $80 less. In my opinion, it's hard to justify this room, which feels dated compared to the Pop Century room, though it's a little bit smaller over there, when you're still getting the perk of the Skyliner, so. You can just take the Skyliner here if you wanted to enjoy some of the cuisine. Yeah, the food's definitely better here, but yeah. the room itself, it, it, not. it needs an update. Yeah. It, it just needs a little update. It's not bad, there's nothing wrong with it, but staying in all these hotel rooms, we can easily tell that this one is it's it's due. It's time. And speaking of time, it's time for our next feeding. We gotta get ready. We do. Give us a moment. Yeah. We're ready to We're go ready. under the sea to see Sebastian. Except for not really, but we are going to his bistro, mm. which is the sit down restaurant here at this resort. I've never been. I've, I went a long time ago, but it's been redone. Mm. So I'm excited to enjoy it tonight. We have asked. Made it over to Sebastian's Bistro, which is right next door to Banana Cabana. This is a table service restaurant only open for dinner. It's not a signature restaurant though, so resort casual is more than fine. And within the last several years, they went to a prefix menu. So everyone gets basically the same thing unless you want to do some of the add-ons or they do have a, a vegan option if you're needing that. Uh, but I'm excited to try it because it seems to be a taste of the islands, like a walk through the Caribbean foodie tour, which which I am jazzed about. Plus, I've heard the dessert is fantastic. Sebastian's Bistro is a smaller restaurant that after its refurbishment has been made lighter and brighter. And while there is one painting of Sebastian, I wish there had been more Easter eggs from the Little Mermaid throughout. However, that said, Sebastian was singing some Disney hits as well as some reggae songs and Bob Marley as the soundtrack to this restaurant, which honestly, I thought was a great addition. As I mentioned earlier, Sebastian's Bistro is a prefix menu and it's served family style, so everything's gonna come out to your table, but it's also all you care to enjoy, so if you'd like a little bit of anything you're loving, feel free to ask. It's $38 for adults, $20 for kids, and as I mentioned before, there is a plant-based version. 
The meal is going to start with rolls and salad, move into proteins, and then finalize with dessert. And there are some add-ons. If you want to add on coconut shrimp or alcoholic beverages, you can do that in addition to your meal. Taking a look at the drink menu, there are a lot of specialty tropical beverage, both non-alcoholic and alcoholic offered. Everything from things like pina coladas to Mai Tais, as well as a create your own specialty Caribbean rum old fashioned, which is what I did. I got the Angostura 1919 rum with black walnut bitters and agave. Now this was unfortunately a bit too sweet for me. I would not have gone for this again, or if I did, I would have asked to not actually have any syrup and just go with the rum and the bitters. But I think it's really cool that this is something that Sebastian's offers, and if you want to explore creating your own rum old fashioned, I highly encourage you to do so. In a shocking twist of events no one saw coming, I got an old fashioned, specifically the marooned pig old fashioned, which was Buffalo Trace Kentucky straight bourbon, bacon infused pure maple syrup, Angostura bitters, and literally bacon. This was actually a very good old fashioned. I was quite surprised. I was worried it would be a little bit too sweet because of the maple syrup, but it still had that burning alcohol flavor. You could taste the bourbon and the maple syrup just added a slight bit of sweetness that balanced that out. Plus, who doesn't want a piece of bacon? Actually, the piece of bacon is kind of a weird texture after it's been sitting in the drink, so I didn't actually eat the whole thing, but it's a fun novelty item. And then our starters arrived, which consisted of the buttery housed baked pull apart rolls with guava butter and caramelized onion jam the spice necklace salad, and the coconut shrimp with creamy chipotle dipping sauce. Now, now, this is an upgrade to add the coconut shrimp, but we absolutely had to try it. Now, the rolls were the star of this show in my eyes, specifically that onion jam. My goodness, was it great. It was smoky, a little sweet, some nice caramel flavor, and it went really well with that guava butter. Also, the rolls came topped with a Mickey-shaped Parmesan cookie. It was delightful. It was like a shortbread Parmesan cracker. It was great on the butter with the caramelized onion jam, and I liked it so much that Laura, our sweet server, surprised me with a couple extras. The salad was interesting. The key lime dressing, the key lime vinaigrette was really sweet, but also somehow incredibly tart and acidic at the same time. It was a difficult balance for me to try to understand. And honestly, even though the produce was fresh and and the Honeycrisp pumpkin seeds on top were nice, it was not my favorite. Lastly, in this course, we had those coconut shrimp, and these were good. They tasted like coconut shrimp that you would get from anywhere. They tasted better than ones you would buy in the freezer section and heat up at home, um, but they didn't taste like they had been necessarily made fresh right then, but they had crispy sweet coconut on them, and I liked the chipotle dressing. I would probably get these again if I went back to Sebastian's. Next up, the main course, where we got a big platter with oven-roasted citrus chicken, slow-cooked mojo pork with a mango sambal, we got grilled chili rubbed beef with a mojito relish and sustainable baked fish with a Veracruz sauce. All of this is served with cilantro rice and beans, a vegetable curry, and green seasonal vegetables, which in our case was broccolini. I started with the chicken, which was actually quite nice and probably my favorite meat on the platter. It wasn't dry, which can happen often with chicken. It had a nice sweetness from the citrus. It wasn't anything super exciting, but it was well-cooked chicken. I also tried the chili rubbed beef, which I gotta say was not my favorite. I really liked the mojito relish, which was fresh and bright and had a little bit of mint and cucumber, but the meat on its own, while cooked okay, was very salty in my opinion. I didn't really care for it. And I tried the pork and the sustainable baked fish. Now for me, the pork was my favorite. It, it was lightly acidic with a little bit of pineapple flavor from whatever it was cooked in, and I really enjoyed it. Very, very tender and a good addition to the plate. The fish, however, took my medal for least favorite, while it was very flaky, it was also incredibly dry and it did have a bit of a fishy flavor that just wasn't sitting for me. As far as the sides go, I really enjoyed the broccolini. Yes, it was just grilled broccolini, but it wasn't overly salted. It had a little bit of citrus on it and it just tasted like a good grilled vegetable. Nothing to complain about. For my sides, I tried the rice with beans as well as the vegetable curry. Now the rice with beans was very simple, good cilantro flavor, light rice. I really enjoyed that. The vegetable curry, however, had to be my favorite side. Very warm, earthy flavors that just felt like a warm hug. Overall, this main platter was pretty hit or miss with some solid choices and some items that I would not have again. And lastly, dessert, which is the house-made coconut pineapple bread pudding with a caramel sauce and vanilla ice cream. I had heard tale that this was wonderful, and as a big fan of Ohana bread pudding, I'd also heard that this is better than Ohana bread pudding. 
let's get into that in a second. For starters, take a look at this bad boy. Big chunks of coconut and pineapple in the actual bread pudding itself. You're going to dress it with your caramel sauce, and it really was delicious. As a coconut lover, I loved that addition. The pudding itself was fantastic. The sauce was a little too sickly sweet for my taste, especially if your sauce to ice cream to bread pudding ratio was off, but truly, it was a very delicious dish and my favorite thing of the meal. Do I think it's better than Ohana's? No, I don't. I think that Ohana does the sauce a little bit better, and they're pretty equal on the bread pudding itself, therefore giving Ohana a slight edge. But truly delicious. And we learned from Crystal, our server at Banana Cabana, that if you're nice to the servers at Banana Cabana in the evening time, they may be able to get you this as a secret menu item over there. Overall, I think Sebastian's Bistro is a great value. You're going to get a lot of food for the cost, and the reservations are fairly easy to come by. That said, though, the food is pretty hit or miss, with some items being pretty darn tasty, while others just didn't hit for me. Knowing what I know now, I would not go out of my way to eat here, especially if I was missing, say, a meal in a park or at another resort. Okay, dinner consumed. That bread pudding was... It was pretty tasty. That was something. It was pretty tasty. That was quite nice. I'm very full. Yeah, be full. Very tired as well. All the eating. Honestly, that that's it. <laughs> Well, we had a lovely day exploring a little bit of Caribbean beach. Hopefully you had fun following along. I think it's time for us to scroll through the channel's old school styles and find, I don't know, a movie I've seen a hundred times, uh, but edited for content and time with commercials. That is my dream right now. Yeah, that's the one. That or Chopped mm. or SVU. Those are like peak hotel room, boom, 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 hotel boom, viewings. Boom. But we'll see you in the morning where we're gonna get breakfast and uh, finish out this vacation. Yeah. Good everybody. Good morning. Let's go get some breakfast. Wanted to also give you a closer look at the leisure pools. This is the one in our neighborhood, Martinique. But again, they have one in all five of the island neighborhoods. And these aren't as exciting as the main pool, but it is nice that they offer them in case you're further away. There's not any music. The vibes are much different going on over here. Um, but if you want to just lay by a standard hotel pool, you sure can. Wanted to point one more thing out as we are walking through our building here. There are no elevators at these buildings. So um, if you cannot do stairs, you need to request a first level room, but keep that in mind when bringing your bags up. We have made our way over to Trinidad to check out Spyglass Grill, which is the quick service location located at this neighborhood. And this is where we're gonna grab our breakfast this morning. Spyglass Grill is very pirate themed and you tell because they've got some hidden details around the space, including this. The nine pieces of eight from Pirates of the Caribbean, which is really fun to look in and see all the different nine pieces of whatever the pirates had at the moment. A really great thing about Spyglass Grill is that they are open until 11.30 for breakfast. So if you want to have a little bit of a later start to your day, maybe luxuriate a bit in the morning, you can mobile order here like we did and walk over and pick up your breakfast at 11.30 before they transition over to lunch. Okay, breakfast has arrived. I picked up the breakfast Cuban because why not? Sounds like a good time. And Molly has picked up the breakfast platter. All right, so I got the scrambled eggs platter, which comes with multi-grain toast, scrambled eggs, your choice of protein. This is turkey, sausage, and potatoes. So kind of a basic breakfast. I did a little transition from my normal Mickey waffle, which I don't think they have here, but they do have over at um, Centertown. I'm just gonna do that. I also got some fruit, and uh, they do have shaky Jamaican here, which I put in my mug. Tastes like sausage, eggs, toast, and potatoes. So a very simple breakfast, nothing super exciting, but Alan got the more exciting thing and I wanted to showcase what something else looks like. So simple breakfast, nothing on this, either menu is that unique other than what Alan got, I think. For the record, we are gonna share both things, so. Yes, we are going to share. So on this breakfast Cuban is the pressed style Cuban sandwich with ham, pulled pork, egg, and Swiss cheese. No mustard or pickles. So they're removing that from the standard Cuban which I guess makes sense for breakfast time. This is a Cuban. I have to say, I do wish it had the mustard and the pickle on it. But other than that, I mean, it's a pretty good hearty breakfast sandwich. This is a nice serving. Plenty of protein on here with the, with the ham and the pulled pork, which are both flavorful and seasoned well. I mean, it's a standard breakfast sandwich. And that brings us to the end of our stay here at the Caribbean Beach Resort. So what'd you think? Before the staycation, um, if you had asked me, if forced to choose my least favorite resort in Walt Disney World, I would have said Caribbean Beach. Mm -hmm. But after the staycation, 
I would have said Caribbean Beach. Listen, there's a lot of resorts here and least favorite doesn't mean bad. It's just, this is not the resort I would pick. I am gonna give it its flowers though. I love the renovated lobby area. I think it is light and bright and welcoming. Um, I love that they're redoing the pool area. I think that'll be nice and it'll be open very soon if it's not open already by the time you're seeing this. And I was very impressed with the food at both Centertown Market for lunch yesterday, as well as Banana Cabana and some portions of Sebastian's. Like I was blown away by the food. I, I did not expect that quick service food or that bar food to be that good, but it, it really truly was. I think the biggest thing for me is that while the updates that have been made are nice, there are outskirts of this resort that also need to be updated, especially when you look at things like All Star or Pop Century that have had those updated rooms, and then you compare that to the room that we had here. I also gotta say, I avoid resorts that do have an inner bus loop that adds so much time to your day, especially when you're trying to get to a park early or just trying to get to a park in general. That adds a lot of time to your day. And this resort has an inner bus loop because it's massive, which some people see as a pro, other people see as a con, because it can take a long time to get from your room, depending where it is, to the Skyliner yeah. station or to that main area for the food. So for me personally, I want a resort that's a little more compact. If I'm looking at a moderate, I'm probably picking Port Orleans French Quarter, which is nice and compact and everything you need is right there. I think the biggest perk of staying here is, of course, access to the Skyliner and being on the Skyliner loop. But I'll also say, if you look at a place like Pop Century, for example, you're paying the value price for updated rooms and are also on the Skyliner Loop and can easily pop over here for food or to the Riviera, which are the same perks that we would say about staying here. The last thing I will say, though, we had some fabulous cast oh member interactions. Gosh. The cast members have mm -hmm. been wonderful not to say that most cast members aren't but like they were above and beyond yeah. with their customer service so big shout out to sarah who checked us in she was fabulous crystal at banana cabana laura last night at sebastian's bistro um so i will say the cast and the cast like welcoming guests in and waving to everybody in the lobby yesterday like really did bring the disney magic to this day it was incredible but let us know where you'd like to see us stay next time and until next time, friends, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you would like to join with the man fam in the conversation about this or any of our other videos, join us on Discord. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been magical. Bye. Bye. Aruba, Jamaica, ooh, I want to take you to Bermuda, Bahama, come, come on, pretty mama, Key Largo. Montego, baby, what? Thank you, Danny. Come, come, Wow, that's off. We'll get there fast and then we'll take it slow. That's where we wanna go. Way down to go, come,